New Orleans, the comeback city from Hurricane Katrina, is where Amtrak Sunset Limited begins its westward journey toward Los Angeles. Four flags have flown here, flags from France, Spain, the Confederate States of America, and the United States. The charm of this unique southern city has never dimmed, not from storms nor from battles. It's a city of music, history, and good times, not to mention good food and warm people. The Sunset Limited heads west from this balmy place, chasing the sunset across swamp, bayous, and sprawling deserts. This famous train, train number one, crosses the wide Mississippi River on the Huey P. Long Bridge, named for a Louisiana governor and popular leader. It's the longest railroad bridge in the United States at 4.4 miles, built in 1935. Now on the west side of the Mississippi, the Sunset Limited rolls through Shriver and New Iberia to Lafayette. If Acadiana were a state instead of a cultural region, Lafayette would be the capital. It's named after that French general who helped George Washington during the Revolutionary War. It's the cultural and geographic center of the region, a place of business, art, and culture, and unforgettable food. We'll get off here to visit the rice capital of the world. Of course, that's Crowley. This is an area known as the Acadiana Prairie. It's flat country with fertile soil. There are lots of farms here, growing rice and soybeans. Here's my cousin and sister during soybean harvest. Here are fields in the winter prepared for next year's crops. If you're wondering where the bayous are, Acadia Parish has them too. This bridge crosses Bayou Plaquemine. Bayou Plaquemine starts north of Crowley and drains into the Mermintaw River. This area has cypress trees. These are called cypress knees. Both are beautiful features found at the water's edge. You don't have to go far to see cypress trees here. And you don't have to go anywhere at all to see rice fields. I've always found something magical about rice. The heavy golden heads bowed down in graceful arcs, ready for harvest. Since I was 13, I was privileged to work on my uncle's farm in the summer. Harvest time was a season of good moods, even among the most crotchety of farmers. Years later, my mood got a boost watching the rice harvest in this field near my family's home. A combine empties its hopper into a rice cart called the rice buggy by some. A tractor pulls the rice cart to a truck where it empties the rice of two combines. If you try driving a truck into these fields, it would get stuck in the mud.
truck now takes the rice to a dryer located on the farm. A new truck is now ready to take its place. Here comes another load of rice. These tractors have two seats, one for the driver and a jump seat for watching. I got to trade places with the little guy. It was our turn now to unload. The basic technology hasn't changed. Inside the auger is a single helix wrapped around a long axle, a big screw that turns to offload the grain. Driver has to keep moving up keep the rice from spilling over the side. So here we went, out into the field to get a load. I hadn't been on a field tractor in years, and this was definitely a different experience. Was he controlling our speed with just his thumb? Is that the throttle? This all looked amazingly high-tech. And what was all this beeping? Here we see a combine unloading its hopper into the other rice buggy. We have to get out of the way of the combine. So now we're crossing the field and the driver gives me an apology for all the bumps. Sorry about the bump drive. Yes, you can't help that. <laughs> That's a rice field for you. We're gonna ditch him here, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. It's all right. Makes it more realistic with a little camera shake. A little camera shake? Am I kidding? A little camera shake? You can see the full hopper on the combine. We pull up to the side so it can empty into our cart. This can be tricky. The tractor has to match the speed of the combine 
can't get too close, but we have to be close enough to catch all the rice. Later, we repeated it with the other combine, and I went from tractor to combine. Now we're cutting rice to rock and roll. Here's a new one on me. The combine's controlled with a joystick. When I worked for my uncle back in the day. Back, in the day. back when Mike was a kid, and I was a little older kid, we didn't have air conditioning on the combine. Oh, that was disappointing. Oh, huh? yeah. <laughs> At least we never expected that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Air conditioning has come a long way. Yeah. Big turning reel in the front gathers the rice and pulls it into the cutter bar below. Severed rice, stalk and all, go into the threshing part, a bunch of metal teeth moving back and forth, which removes the grain from the stalk. The grain fills the hopper while the stalks come out the back of the combine as straw. Now, are all those beeps telling you something? Well, I know you just said to God, it's like what I'm fixing to do. I'm fixing to start a new line. but if it gets more than so many inches off, it beeps. Oh. Whenever it's right on it, it don't beep. Yeah. Oh, I see. Like I just set an A point, and I'll drive down to the, the end, and I'll hit a B point, and it'll move over 30 feet. I'll be there. Yeah. Wow. After a while on the combine, I was back on the tractor, taking on a load from another combine. Yeah. 
This time I paid more attention to these birds who were always present where the combines were. I think this is their way of cooling off. It was a hot afternoon. With the rice downloading into the truck, I shared that full, rich feeling of a good harvest. During the winter, this field would grow crawfish. Traps like this would be set and gathered by people in these boats. Great white egrets and black curlews would come to get their share. These species apparently get along well together. I often saw them united. And somehow they never seem to run into each other. When the rice crop has been harvested and October comes around, Crowley hosts the International Rice Festival. Residents see the familiar downtown area transformed into a splashy collection of booths. Most of them selling festive food. We were on a mission to find pork chop sandwiches. Mission accomplished at this church food stand. That's The main stage was pumping out recorded music. Tonight, there'll be a live band. This street will be wall-to-wall -wall people. We came on a Friday afternoon when the food was fresh and the crowds thin. Downtown Crowley was a riot of color and food and aroma and food and more food. Gumbo, turkey drumsticks, and more. This could be your only chance to taste Zydeco shrimp or fried alligator on a stick. For my wife Liz, this was her first rice festival. People come from all around, and by Saturday night, this street looks very different. And here's the carnival rides that we always look so forward to as kids. You find rides in games and restrooms. If you want clean ones, they're available for a price. You don't have to go home if you spend all your money. There's a mobile bank machine. You can just pull out more money from your account. And if your account were overdrawn, you could still enjoy a live Christian band under the big tent. And if you prefer fine arts over performing arts, there's an art fair in a nearby park. It's a great chance to meet some South Louisiana artists and see their work. He does a lot of junk and goose. Uh, Here we met noted artist Dale Pousson. Some of his work has appeared on duck stamps. His drawing really captured the essence of this cougar. He's going to be looking at it. And that just, that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, well, you just got those eyes in such a position that they appear to be hitting you dead on. Seeing work of this quality 
It's a wonder we resisted taking one of these paintings back home with us. The art fair was held in a familiar park. My Boy Scout troop played Capture the Flag here. This plaque commemorates the founding of Crowley. Crowley was named after a section engineer for the Southern Pacific Railroad who brought the main line right through what would become the town. For tractor fans, you could see antique tractors, and one that's not so antique for little tykes. I was looking forward to the demonstration of the thrashing machine. My uncle used one of these when he was young. My great uncle had two of these Model D John Deere's. This big flywheel is here for just this kind of work. No air conditioned cab on this tractor. I got to see the equipment all right, but they were having trouble firing up that old Model D John Deere. So we headed home to eat those huge pork chop sandwiches. If you can't be in Crowley during the rice festival, you can still learn about rice farming in this rice capital. Look for this building. It's Crowley City Hall, but it's also the home of a great museum. The three of us pretty much had the place to ourselves one rainy afternoon, and I found out that, well, I still had a lot to learn about rice. Back when I worked on the farm, we didn't have our own rice dryer, and believe it or not, I had never been inside a rice mill. Crowley had plenty of them. At least I got to see this model and read about the process. I also knew that a lot of research on rice is done here, but I had never been in the rice experiment station either. A video here demonstrates the research work as well as other aspects of rice production. The video even brought us back to trains with some history of Southern Pacific Railroad. The video brought us inside a rice mill to see how rice is milled. If you're passionate about rice, consider your visit to Crowley and this museum as a pilgrimage. If your passions are more with American music, especially the blues, your visit could be considered a pilgrimage to this major force in the music world. There's a whole floor here that recreates the Miller Recording Studio. Growing up, I always knew there was some kind of record making going on in Crowley, but I never imagined that it was so far reaching. Little did anyone suspect that JD's winning performance would launch a career that would eventually land him a well deserved seat at the Louisiana Blues Hall of Fame. Just how important JD would become in helping Louisiana musicians, bluesmen, Cajun, Zydeco, Swamp Pop, and country artists alike earn fame and fortune. It wasn't God who made Honky Kenny Wells' rendition of Miller's song catapulted to the top of the charts. The record sold one million copies, an almost unheard of accomplishment at the time. This was just a fraction of what we learned from this excellent video, which you can see at the museum at Crowley City Hall. But you can't get off at Crowley. You have to go to Lafayette to get off the train. There was a time when Crowley had passenger rail service. This beautifully restored depot was served by trains from the Missouri Pacific Railroad. This landmark still survives as does the old Railway Express building. 
But the old Southern Pacific Depot is long gone. Only this concrete foundation survives today. Crowley's very name came from the Southern Pacific Railroad, and the passenger trains of my youth looked like this. This was the site of the Sunset Limited rolling through town. Here's the Sunset Limited rolling through town today. The Sunset Limited roars right through Crowley, but it doesn't stop here. The stop after Lafayette is Lake Charles. As we headed west, we left behind Crowley's rice mills, only to see more in communities along the tracks. Esterwood, Midland, Mermintaw, Jennings all grew up along the SP railroad tracks. Did we go through this town once? Yeah, this is Welch. That's the road at Lacassine that goes down to Hackberry. Construction of a new siding allows me to see the farm where I used to work during the summer. I can remember being out in these fields on a tractor, seeing the Sunset Limited speeding by on its way to the west coast, a place my 13-year-old mind could only imagine. I would always wave, and my uncle would tell me, there goes the Sunset Limited. My great-uncle bought this farm and worked his whole life to pay it off. This is looking toward the railroad tracks. A house, barn, and shed used to be here. There used to be a large warehouse here and the house where my uncle's retired farmhand lived. The only building that remains is this old brick garage used as a garage for my great-uncle's Ford Galaxy. We had a grindstone here for sharpening shovels. Our next stop was Lake Charles, then a trip over the Calcasieu River, admiring the Interstate 10 bridge in the last light of day. Here's the river crossing from the other side of the train. Not far from here is the Louisiana Welcome Center with this sign out back. On the west side of the river, we pass through one of this area's many petrochemical plants. We're running out of daylight, and we'll soon be running out of Louisiana. I savor my French Creole, served over rice, of course. Besides family, friends, and food, I miss Louisiana's incredible sunsets, one of which we were heading into right now. 